Hey, this is Blind Man Bird. I want to give a thumbs up to Jonathan Best for his efforts on the Bridges Not Walls project that he's going to be literally embarking on, I guess in a few days, to take his van full of musical instruments and positive energy down to Nogales and to help document what is occurring along the border security uh, region in there, uh, down there right now. Um, I, don't, I honestly don't know uh, what's occurring. The main focus has been on what's occurring in Congress, or I should say not occurring in Congress. And, um, you know, as somebody very politically oriented, I'm very concerned with where we are, but I'm also trying to understand and respect all the points of view, trying to wade through all the bullshit news articles that are skewing information one way or another, and when you really look at what's going on, the, the situation is far more nuanced and complicated than pe most people tend to understand. My own thing that I've been doing for the last 48 hours, which sounds at first to be off topic to this, is to work, and I only have like about five minutes of iPhone video, so this is going to be a very short video, um, is to come up with a mashup of the ancient board game Backgammon, which dates back to 3000 BCE, believe it or not, 5000 years old, plus this slightly less ancient game, which itself is a mashup. It's called The Royal Game of Ur, dating back to 2600 BCE. And it's a, it itself is a mashup of the Egyptian game, also from 3000 BCE, Senate, with backgammon, with this slightly less ancient game by Hasbro known as Risk, which dates back to 1957. And oddly enough, what I'm doing is, is I'm coming up and this really comes out from a game... Oh, I'm switching hats now to get out of political mode and talk more about game theory. So I'm, I'm coming up with this weird mashup game here of the rules of backgammon and Ur. Ur is very backgammon-like, but has smaller hops of, like, in this case, one to three squares, as opposed to in backgammon where you jump, like, two to 24... Sorry, three to 24 squares in a given roll. And oddly enough, the goals of this game are to get your migrant caravan from your start point to your end point. Like, for example, this team who is way out in the lead right now, these are Greenlanders. That's what the meaning of this flag or this home piece is on Greenland. The yellow is trying to get all of its pieces, or not all of its pieces, I should say seven of its pieces, representing quite literally 7,000 people to Argentina. Why? It's just kind of, there's stupid backstory to this game. It's just an example. These Greenlanders are tired of seeing the water in their drain go down counterclockwise, but they like living in cold weather, so they're trying to get to Argentina where they'll see the waters in their drain go clockwise due to the Coriolis forces of the Earth, the rotation of the Earth. So it's a silly backstory, and it's kind of like a reverse commute, in a sense, to the normal way we think of this migration. But the, uh, the starting, or the ethnicity, is actually randomly selected in these rules in, in a similar way to the fact that you don't choose your nationality, you're just born into it, at least by my way of thinking of it. So they're actually way out ahead, because they've already scored one, that's the meaning of this yellow thing here. They have 3,000 people about to cross the border here, there's no protections whatsoever. They just have to roll the proper rolls to do that. They need to get three ones. They have a, an amazing 7,000 people waiting in a deportation cell, and a one or a two or a three will enable them to go one, two, three from their home port. So any ones will be going there. Any other numbers will be used to move these pieces down or get new pieces up. They're way ahead. These guys are Southern Europeans, I don't know, Italians, Albanians, Yugoslavians. It's a whole territory right there. So Red is trying to get from here, and they haven't, they haven't scored yet, so have, they haven't disclosed that they're trying to get to Alaska. So it seems crazy, you know, what's the motivation for wanting to go to Alaska? Well, it's actually, you simply have to have your destination be pretty far away. Uh, six hops in risk seems to be optimal. So you can think of it as they're trying to go 6,000 miles, in a sense. Uh, you know, these guys are trying to go 6,000 miles to here. These guys are trying to go 6,000 miles either along this path or it's also strategically 
chosen because they can go through this path and then cross through the Bering Straits. Meanwhile, you have Yakutskians, who are ethnically Russian, I guess, or ethnically, I don't want to say Slavic, I don't know what you would call this ethnicity out here. They are trying to get from their home place of Yakutsk to, and ironically, just for illustrative purposes, I chose in Argentina. When Argentina was claimed, they had to change their choice to Peru, which is the same distance away for them, 7,000 miles. So they're, uh, they're not doing very well because right now they're blocked. They went in this direction and they're now getting blocked by things occurring here. They should have gone in this direction. Yellow has a, screen, has a clear shot to get people going down here. Now that it's public where they're headed, red will probably send considerable interference down here. Uh, and red is trying to get to Alaska, so that's not too far out of the way. I think it's eight. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's seven to go to Alaska this way. So red can accomplish its goal of being a migrant going up there while also interfering with yellow now that we know that yellow is trying to basically start in Greenland and head south to Argentina. So it's this weird mashup of rules, but now changing hats once again. Recall also that Monopoly, which was invented in 1903, was invented as a statement about the politics of the time, which had to do with wealth inequality, uh, taxation be policy being wrong, taxation policies not rewarding wealth creators, but rewarding monopolists. Theodore Roosevelt was kind of like the Bernie Sanders of his time, whom, from what I hear, had been elected vice president kind of to shut him up. But then when McKinley was assassinated and Theodore Roosevelt came to power, he did a lot to curb the monopolists. So now we seem to have this entrenched or intransit, what's the word when you're stuck? This, uh, this virtual halting of the process to negotiate and get things done. And it's what's been going on with immigration policy for the last 30, maybe even 40 years in the United States, going back to the, uh, to the 80s, certainly. So uh, it frustrates me, and it makes me feel like I can't really do anything. And my little game is not coming out as a statement, a political statement. It's really coming... Monopoly was a statement and has since become like a fun game to play, and it's really, from a, a game-theoretic standpoint, a brilliant game. My contribution is actually to try and come up with a a solid game from a game theoretic standpoint and I'm bleary-eyed from thinking about it for the last 48 hours but it has relevance to today it has relevance to politics so I'm not trying to cash in on the situation I just observed that oh wow this is like a game about multiple caravans and the more I thought about it some of the things I wanted to add like making your caravan grow from 4,000 to start with to the 7,000. You're trying to increase your biomass is the term in the game. Uh, you're trying to increase the number of people that are behind your cause. And you do that by being cutthroat. You do that by deporting people and killing them, which I know is counterintuitive. It doesn't really apply to the actual political scene, but that's the way the game works. So it's kind of weird, this weird mashup of rules, and hopefully it'll make people think in different terms, like to try and get out of their political heads and think about what it might be for somebody with a different point of view. And if we can do that, if we can just simply think of it from all sides, that's the first step towards compromise and effective change. So hopefully Democrats and Republicans will be able to work it out. Hopefully they will hear from migrants trying to get in and listen to their stories and not simply come up with a disconnected policy that appears to benefit Americans but doesn't really hear the migrant or the immigration side of the argument. Um, these are all really key things. So I don't have a lot of hope for the future in general. All I want to do is just finish the damn rules to this game, which are already on their 11th iteration of fine-tuning in the last 48 hours. So Blind Man Bert signing out. I hope you enjoyed this video, this little video.